Welcome to the press conference of the 6th Assembly of ISA. Uh, I would now like to invite uh, our Director General, Dr. Ajay Mathur, to deliver the opening remarks. President, Co-President, Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, it's such a pleasure to welcome all of you here. We are gathered here on the occasion of the 6th Assembly of the International Solar Alliance. The International Solar Alliance is a multilateral treaty-based organization which today has 116 member countries. Uh, over the next few months, before the end of the year, take us to 120. I mean, this tells you of the progression of the ISA membership. Together with the progression of the membership, the key issue is the alliance is about making solar as the energy source of choice in various countries. And being the energy source of choice means obviously that you have to advocate for it. And therefore we produce a large number of reports on the progress in energy technologies and energy markets and energy investments in India. We focus on the ease of doing solar for different countries so that they, we investors know how easy it is. We also, to enable people to have confidence to invest in markets where money is not going right now, we have created last year the Global Solar Facility with an insurance fund and a payment guarantee mechanism so that investors feel comfortable. The solar industry as a whole has pushed, pulled in record amounts of investment. Last year it was about $310 billion. This year it's expected to cross $380 billion. But the vast amount of the world did not receive one or two or three or four or five percent of that amount. All of Africa, for example, received three percent of the 310 billion that was invested last year. This is why the payment guarantee mechanism and the insurance mechanism is aimed at enabling investment, and, but not only in large projects, in small projects. We are talking of, of, of mini solar plants, we are talking of solar mini grids, we are talking of rooftop solar, we are talking of solar rooftops, uh, solar cold storages, and so on. At the same time, we also want that there are internal, national organizations that can enable the, this money to be used. We want to identify startups. In the past year, we have identified 20 startups in Africa. They are now we are working with them on bootstrapping caps to help build up their capabilities in terms of enabling them to receive money, equity investments. We are to help them develop technological partnerships, to help them to brand energy, to become the Amazons of tomorrow, providing solar products and services in Africa. And most of all, we are also focusing on the next challenge in solar, which is to use hydrogen as a carbon-free fuel where you can't use electricity. Green hydrogen is important for us. And we are therefore looking at sharing information that countries of the world are doing on hydrogen, providing the training that is needed for green hydrogen trained professionals to come into the market and for, for matchmaking of developers of green hydrogen with the suppliers of finance for green hydrogen. These are the kinds of issues that are there on the assembly as we meet now. But without further ado, let me introduce the president of the International Solar Alliance and then the co-president who are the ministers respectively from India and France respectively. And then I would request all the other ministers to briefly, for a minute or two, talk about their views on solar and how the Solar Alliance can help them. And we then look forward to your questions as well. Sir. Thank you. 
Sisters, friends of the media. The International Foreign Alliance has emerged as a force for the good in this way. As the Director General informed you, we in fact already have 120 member, member countries. <coughs> And there are also a number of member countries who have signed, but we still have to ratify. So they will ratify and become member countries. We have a large number of partner organizations. Most multilateral development banks are our partner organizations. So this was a huge, huge organization. And it has started delivering. Today, at the start of the assembly, we dedicated four projects which had come up in four different countries. Before this, we had we have completed seven projects which have been dedicated. We will be completing about 12 projects again by this summer. So this uh, the organization has started developing. This organization has a salient sort of uh, there's a salient requirement. It has a salience. The reason for this salience is this, that there are about 733 million people in this world who do not have access to it. Now we in the International Social Alliance believe that it is our mission to ensure access to these people and ensure access using renewable energy, using solar energy. In renewable energy, solar has the most potential has the, uh, it's the best because it's available for a longer period of time, in, both in terms of seasons as well as in terms of number of hours per day. Today itself, when the four projects which were inaugurated, one was solarization of parliament buildings, the other was solarization of health centers. The, we've, we've solarized schools, health centers, parliament buildings, across, across different countries in Africa, mostly in Africa. What the Solar International Solar Alliance has been doing is, it has been providing expertise, handholding, support. It provides training support. It has set up training centers in countries across Africa, so that uh, technicians can be trained. It has a program for viability gap funding, so that projects which come up in the developing countries, viability gap funding is available. Today we decided, all of us, all the honorable ministers here, together we decided that we'll increase the viability gap funding from 10% to 35%. So this will enable more investments flow into Africa. Today we also discussed how we can uh, how uh, we can replicate what we have done in India, in other countries, the regulatory mechanism, the techno-regulatory framework which we have put in place, which has enabled investments to come in India. We share that experience with uh, all the countries, so that a similar techno-regulatory framework, etc., can be replicated, along with this, you know, dispute resolution mechanisms and payment security mechanisms, so that private investments can come. Because without private investments, by public investments alone, we cannot ensure universal access to electricity because I mean, no country has uh, enough money to set up all the capacity which it needs. It, uh, private sector investment is essential. And we need to de-risk investment so that private investments can come. For de-risking that investment, the International Solar Alliance has set up a fund which will de-risk investments in these countries, the developing countries. So that fund has components as the Dakis have told you. It has an insurance component, so that insurance component ensures the project which is set up. It has a payment security mechanism component, so that whenever any generator generates electricity and supplies electricity, payment security is ensured. Now, with these mechanisms, and also after putting, uh, uh, you know, putting these uh, regulatory mechanisms in place, with these mechanisms, we are certain that investments will start flowing into Africa, especially those countries which have problems of energy access to other people. We expect green finance also to become available, you know, and partner with us 
in this in the funds which we are setting up. And uh, once that happens, once the green funds start flowing, as per the commitment made by the developed countries in COP21 about investments in green funds, once the green funds start becoming available at scale, we'll have projects, renewable energy projects being rolled out, solar energy projects being rolled out at scale throughout the, those countries where, where which have uh, problems of access to energy. You can't have any development without access to energy. So this is the key. And the International Solar Alliance has been formed to make it possible. We believe that climate action is just not going to happen until unless we solve the problem of energy access. You, you, you can't have uh, any uh, you know, the energy transition unless and until you solve the problem of energy access. Access first and then transition. Or access using green energy. That is our philosophy. So that uh, if unless you solve this problem, the climate action will not really work. And that is the problem with the transcends our lives is there to address. And this, as I said, this is a reliance in which all of us work together for the common good. This is, I, with this organization, I think, is one of the most critical organizations as we take on the challenge of global warming. Thank you. I respect all my colleagues, honorable ministers, uh, to inform you of other decisions which we we also, take a, we also took decisions to strengthen the organization by adding more posts. And yet, yes, uh, we also the, are a totally transparent uh, organization. So all appointments are totally transparent uh, by all member countries, etc. So we decided to strengthen the organization further. We'll have further deliberations in the afternoon. And we are moving forward. The international solar alliance has emerged as emerged as a force, as a force which will help the energy transition and energy access. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Singh. Can I request Mr. Sakarapuru, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs, who is the co president of ISIL, to address the Honorable Minister, Mr. Singh, <coughs> Ministers, uh, I'd like to say that this, uh, it was an honor to open and co chair the sixth assembly of the International Solar Alliance by your side. Uh, I want to thank India for taking the lead on the global call for renewables and especially for solar power. And, uh, Minister, we are thankful for your G20 presidency, which showed the adoption of a common goal to, to triple, triple renewable energy capacity by 2030. Thank you very much. This is an ambition project, and we are happy that um, you, your presidency achieved this goal. And uh, we are going to push with you uh, uh, this goal together at COP28 in Dubai in a few weeks. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the solar revolution is already underway, and the creation of this alliance at COP21 in Paris in 2015, the initial challenge was different. The, in the initial challenge was to lower the cost of, of solar, and to stimulate investment. Today, solar has won this battle. Solar is cheaper than any fossil fuel alternative, and investments have increased massively. One billion dollar per day is being spent on solar investments. So solar and uh, renewable energy have also won uh, a more political battle, if I can say, the narrative. Because with the climate disaster that are more and more frequent, with the consequences of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, with the current situation in the Middle East, 
we, all of us, realize that solar and the renewable energy sources are key building blocks of uh, energy sovereignty, industrialization, and of course, global geopolitical stability. During the state visit uh, uh, of Prime Minister Modi in Paris uh, in July, energy security was one of the main pillars of the Indo-French partnership for the planet that we launched. So we understand that the question of energy is key. So, regarding the solar energy, the question now is not anymore if solar will boom, we know this, <coughs> but uh, the next step is how and uh, to the benefit of whom. And uh, that is when the International Solar Alliance comes into play. As the uh, Minister said, we are 116 member countries. We join forces to make sure that this solar revolution equally benefits all countries and all population. That is what we are trying to focus on as co-leaders of the International Solar Alliance. We focus on two obstacles. The first one is the access to finance for developing countries. We cannot accept that the same solar farm is two times cheaper to finance in the United States or in Europe than in Africa, where there is need but also potential. So France want to incentivize governments and the private sector to invest in renewables and storage solutions. And uh, I can say that uh, my country is very proud to invest in the future of uh, its partners. Since the alliance was launched, the French Development Agency has channeled 1.5 billion euros to solar projects worldwide. In 2022, France climate finance for its partner countries has reached a record high of 7.6 billion euros. So, and these are not just big figures, ladies and gentlemen. These are life-changing projects. We financed the largest solar plant in Africa, in Morocco. We financed the first ever solar plant in Tanzania. That means that I totally believe uh, that uh, we have uh, uh, responsibility, but also that we are a good partner. Our second priority is strengthening human capacity via technical assistance. The solar revolution needs um, trained people, needs engineers, technicians, training centers. How many times I visit uh, many countries? And at the end of the story, the money are there, but there's not the absorption capacity because there are not human capacities. So uh, for us, it's very important. That is the purpose of the ISA Star, Air, Star C program that France is proud to finance. So today I call on my fellow minister to expand the financing and scope of this program. So to sum up, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, France uh, wants uh, to build a people-centered and planet-centered international financial system. That is uh, the goal of the Paris Pact for the People and Planet, now supported by almost 40 countries. It's very simple, if I can say, there are simple principles that are correct and fair. First of all, nobody, no country has to choose between investing to fight in poverty and investing to protect our planet. It's the same battle. The second one that I, I am very, for me is very important, it is that every country has their own national path. We have to respect each country's ownership, but at the same time we should do it in a coordinated way. The third is the public money. Yes, we have a lot of public money, but that's not enough. If the private sector doesn't help us. So 
The third principle of um, the Paris Pact for the People and the Planet is that we need a shock, a public and private financial shock for the huge investment that will be needed to finance this uh, agenda. So I'm convinced that the International Solar Alliance is a key organization to implement uh, the, the Paris Pact. It's a, a key organization uh, for the solar energy, and I look forward to keep working with all of you towards this goal. Merci.